All right. Hey, folks. Um, thank you so much for joining me again. And in this video, I want to talk about the process of learning to work harder and how you can practically apply that on different stages of your training advancement. Um, so I want to kind of talk about it in the lens of saying, well, beginners, intermediates, advanced, and what we should be looking for. I really want to break down the concept for you guys rather than just scream at you to work harder because I don't know how useful that is. But anyway, before we continue, thank you for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments about this video, pop them down below. It also helps the algorithm, or so I'm told. So that would be useful. If you want to help my channel, that's a good way to do it. Um, pop a comment for the algorithm. Apparently that works. <laughs> and also check out my other stuff. Check out my podcast, which I put out every Friday and I have been doing so for four years now, pretty much with a few breaks here and there. Uh, check out my Instagram, Facebook, um, my Patreon, with some cool stuff on there. We have some people on there doing the soft touch coaching option, which is pretty cool. And I have a live Q&A every Friday. So go ahead and check that out. Links are down below. So firstly, cracking on with the video, let's have a look at what I'm talking about today. So I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see. Like a lot of YouTubers really harp on about this whole working harder thing, right? Harder than last time, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, however, I have I like to think my efforts over the last few weeks have highlighted that people need to know how to work harder. What are the different aspects of that? Because I think it's a, it's quite a blanket statement to make just to tell people to, to work harder. And it's almost in a way kind of dismissive. And so my background is in education. And um, the way that when I look at these people saying just work harder, work harder, I think it needs more explanation. It, it'd be like a kid in class failing and you know, they say, sir, what can I do to improve? And you just scream in their face, try harder. <laughs> the sentiment is is good. Like I, I I get that, a very passionate teacher there. <laughs> but like, you know, if you if you um if you said that to a kid, they think you're crazy. So it's not so much I, I and since we are in the realm of education on here on YouTube, um I thought it's good to flesh it out. So just saying to people look work hard isn't always that helpful. Equally so, just having a love in where I say work harder, everyone in the comments goes, yes, that's also not actually that useful because I really want to break down for you guys. Well, why might you be hitting plateaus? Why is your hard work either misdirected or just not there? So I believe, at least from what I've seen um, and people I've worked with, there's quite a few at this stage. Most people, like beginners included, if you are on YouTube, you're watching videos or you're you're signed up for coaching, you have every intention of working harder. I believe that. Over time, people learn to push their sets harder and harder. So I'm not sure how useful the message of working harder is because most people tend to want to try to do that. Now, when you're a beginner, the basic compound lifts tend to work quite well as it's easier to push harder in those lifts. And as I explained in a recent video, it's also easier to push in the lower repetition ranges, like the five to 10. You don't want to put a and a beginner onto 20 rep squats, for example, it would be disastrous. Now, it's not unusual for ranked beginners to stop sets due to a lack of sort of coordination, balance, just lactic acid and throwing up rather than the muscles giving out. So just telling a beginner to work harder isn't necessarily that helpful. They have We have to sort of frame that within the, con within the confines of a good routine. And so there are other apl applications for intermediates and advanced, and that's what I want to discuss in today's video. So in terms of implications for a beginner, I personally feel training to failure for a beginner is not a good idea. This is for a ranked beginner, you know. Let's say somebody who is able to make progress from session to session, so say Monday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Friday, that's a ranked beginner, okay? You go into the gym, you do some training, a decent full body routine, you're stronger by Wednesday or you're stronger by Thursday. You Congratulations, you have very linear progress, you're a beginner, well done. At this stage, gains should be pretty easy anyway. So those extra couple of reps seem mostly pointless in the face of impending injury risk due to your sets breaking down, due to a lack of coordination, all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't seem to be worth it. Therefore, higher frequency becomes more applicable at this stage. So you'll often see me promoting things like full body and intermediate and uh, full body full body and sorry upper lower routines for uh, beginners because the frequency is slightly higher. You can get in, hit it, get the gains, come back later in the week, continue to get stronger, even on the same exercises. That is the definition of a beginner. 
So the dangerous form breakdown is more likely to occur in those final one or two reps. So as a result of the, the, these two points, bro splits are almost never really that applicable at this stage. Now you can imagine that's exactly the opposite of what you'd want as a beginner. If you're a beginner, you don't really want to go to failure. And the implication in most bro splits is you should train to failure, or at least close to that. Also, you want frequency to be a little bit higher because you can progress very rapidly. As a ranked beginner, you can go to the gym Monday, recover and get stronger on the same exact routine by Wednesday. So bro splits are probably not ideal at this stage. Now, the next point is people say is, well, I aim for failure because I likely won't be pushing that hard anyway. The problem is this argument makes zero sense if the trainee doesn't have the capacity to push the hard set safely because the trade-off isn't worth it. Like a trainee going blood and guts because he's hyped upon Dorian Yates black and white training videos on YouTube is not going to help if their form looks like crap and then they end up squatting with a rounded over back, deadlifting with a rounded back and hurting themselves. Well, congratulations. If you've promoted that, all you've done is you just put this beginner off the gym forever. Well done. So no, it's not really applicable for beginners either. They need to push hard safely until form breaks down or before form breaks down and then stop and go again. This is one of the reasons why when it comes to beginners, I will often program sets across where there's no form, where there's no rep drop-offs. So I will often perform a form for um, beginners like 12, 12, 12 or 8, 8, 8, rather than trying to get a rep drop-off because it's not really worth it for them. It's just more important to get good, clean reps in. And you'll know when it's a good idea to change um, the style of training because they'll get more advanced and they'll start to really tire out. So yeah, that's some of the implications of beginner routines. You're looking at more form perfection. You should come out of the beginner stage with at least a reasonable handle on form on all the big major movement patterns. Also, it's probably not a good idea to push all the way to failure, but you still be, should be looking at taking your sets deeper and deeper every time. And I would say relatively higher frequency training is probably better just because you can get away with it. Now, if we move on to the intermediate, so intermediates at this stage, they learn to work harder. They have more of a control on balance, coordination, lactic acid thresholds. So as an intermediate, you're less likely to throw up during a training session. Whereas I did for a limited period of time train as, as a one-on-one, -on -one, like in-house PT. And um, beginner trainers, ranked beginners, they would throw up quite frequently. And it's just it just happens. It's not because they're working particularly hard. It's just because they're really not used to things. So as an intermediate, that will stop happening. You'll learn to work harder your coordination and your balance will be a lot better. You know, you ever seen a beginner bench press and they're like, like that, like that happens less and less as an intermediate. They might still do a few things like tap their feet, but that's starting to go as well. So they level up in terms of intensity. What was a three RIR is now a six RIR. Okay. So they, they, all of a sudden they find more reps in the, res in the reserve, more reps in the tank. At this stage, when you have a basic grasp of form, the message of train harder becomes a lot more relevant as the worry from the injury from form breakdown is far less of a reality. So just work hard, work harder and harder. Now, this is typically when we need to begin to highlight the effects of relative effort on metrics like rep drop-offs and rep slowdown. So all the videos I've released over the last couple of weeks, when I've talked about how your reps should drop off, how your form should slow down, this becomes applicable now in the intermediate stage, not so much at the beginner stage. So the definition of an intermediate really is that they can progress week to week, but with modifications, okay? So this is when some small level of periodization might become applicable. The work harder message is still good, but they should also come with some thought on periodization, just like simple stuff, you know, like some down weeks, um, perhaps even variety within the week, okay? So you might have like a DUP set up like my wizard. You might have different repetition ranges like my barbarian routine. There'll be some type of difference or even just a full-blown deload week. Often at this stage, intermediates will have some kind of load variation, either a deload week or a down week or something to drop fatigue over the course of a number of weeks. So if your coach is just screaming at you, work harder and harder until basically your ass falls out of your pants three months down the line, then that's not cool because at this stage, you do need more than that by definition you will start to accumulate the type of fatigue which needs managing. And if you're not, then, well, you're either not an intermediate or you're not working that hard. So this is when you should really plan for um, some type of load variation and fatigue management.
this is when I start to introduce the concept of either deloads or down weeks with my clients. So that becomes a reality. The actual routine itself is still not that much of a concern. Full body is still workable. You know, there are advanced interpretations for full body, either like things that you see from a bodybuilding perspective in my wizard routine or in the tactician from a powerlifting perspective. But, you know, it's at this point where the focus really is more on how can I change a couple of things to ensure that we're working hard enough that we need some type of load variation, say, four weeks down the line. I mean, if you get to six weeks, you get to three months and you don't need a deload, well, what the, <laughs> what the hell were you doing the whole, the whole three months? I mean, my guys who train hard, they need some type of variation because they're accumulating fatigue. So this really becomes a case of, you know what, if you don't need a deload ever and you're just waiting for like life to come along, then how hard are you really working? How taxing is the routine? I would question that. So at this stage, the intermediate is when we need to start thinking about those things because they should become applicable because they are another clue that you are actually working hard enough. Again, don't just go hard and hard and hard until your ass falls out of your pants and you get injured and you break down and you take three months off the gym. That's not cool. We're looking for slow, steady progress. So that's the intermediate and some practical tips there. Next thing is the advanced. By definition now, you are working hard. And by definition also, you need some fairly complicated periodization to even progress minimally. At this stage, the advanced trainee, it's more about moderating their overall workload rather than encouraging them to work harder because they worked harder to get to this stage, okay? Hard work is still needed, but it can either come in short bursts, so a few weeks on with the deload, or it's moderated with higher volumes overall. So this is when you really might start to look at the RAR system and keep one or two reps in the tank, which is what I've been promoting all along to enable you to do slightly higher volumes. Now, at this point also, the focus of your efforts gets into the targeted muscles. So you're never gonna isolate fully, but you should at least be looking at making sure you're targeting the right muscles when you're doing a movement. So you should bias certain movements towards certain areas. And this is where true specialization is probably a good idea. So this is where if you are mostly interested in physique, and most people are, specialize in that. So rather than trying to say, look, I'm a power builder and I want to do both, eh, that's cool, that's okay. But understand that at this point, you probably will be sacrificing one or the other. This is when things like machine work, repetition range, a variety, and periodization becomes more relevant to increase the stress on the muscles rather than other systems of the body, like the ligaments and nervous system. Again, specialization helps at this stage. I mean, it's not to say you can't do things across the year. You can spend half the year doing some strength focus work, half the year doing some hypertrophy focus work, which is fine. A lot of off-season bodybuilders do compete in powerlifting, and it's a great way to continue your progress because you're always aiming to lift heavier and heavier. So it's, it's not a bad way to go. It's just within the same week tends to become problematic. Okay, so summary and my concluding thoughts. I want to just make this very, very clear about not only working hard, but also the whole idea of training status, the whole beginner, intermediate, advanced. You have to be very careful when discussing these things because they are thorny issues. If you're discussing how hard someone's working, if you're discussing their training status classification, like are you a beginner, are you intermediate, are you advanced? These are thorny issues and they can nag at someone's ego. So when you're discussing these terms, it needs to be done from a point of education and not ego, which is why I do disagree with the message to, which just blankly says work harder without qualification. I'm not sure I like that. I wouldn't have done it as a school teacher and um, I don't feel like I need to do it now here on YouTube. These terms should not be used to dismiss the efforts of a trainee without attempting to understand what they're going through. And I'll just give you that example again, as I said at the beginning of the video, if a kid is failing at school, you just scream in their face, try harder. And they reply, well, okay, sir, but what am I doing wrong exactly? And you just scream again to try harder. Like, how useful is that? Really, how useful is that? So I try and break down what working harder actually means and for what context. So hopefully this video has provided some practical explanations for how to implement that based on where you're at in your journey. So in this context, we're looking at specifically what, when, and how you should actively be trying to work harder. And that's kind of the key point of this message. It's a learning process. Like I, I always start from the perspective that if you are tuned into YouTube, if you are giving you giving me your time, and time is a commodity, it's expensive. If you're giving me your time, I'm going to assume you're here to work hard. That's my assumption. Now, if I see a set and it's not very hard, if you could go a couple of reps, 
closer to failure, I'm going to point that out. And it's not to downplay your efforts, but it's simply to say, look, why don't you try working a bit harder? Why don't you try pushing that set a little bit deeper? And then with my guidance, you can, and you get success. You go, ah, oh, I did it. I'm still alive. My knee didn't fall off. Great. And it takes somebody, it takes maybe a coach or somebody next to you to say, look, why don't you just try pushing a bit harder? Like, that's great. I'm loving your effort. I'm not denying you're not trying hard, but maybe your definition of what trying hard is a little bit off the mark of where it needs to be. So why don't you just try doing that one more? Or maybe maybe you want to say, look for rep drop-offs or look for rep slowdown. These are metrics which you can use. Like, yeah, okay, I, I feel like you, you think you're working hard, but how come the reps didn't slow down? Maybe we could just push a little bit harder. Maybe that's how you know. So next time you watch a video, you're in the gym, you film yourself, and you, you see the reps slow down, you go, ah, I did it. I understand what Faz is saying. Maybe you were previously doing 12, 12, 12, and you're an intermediate trainer, and you've been training for a while, and you're like, ah, I'm not progressing. This feels horrible. And all of a sudden, you start to just add some weight to the bar, and then you get reps like 12, followed by eight, followed by five, and like that. Every set felt great. I understand what Faz is saying. That's the way you educate people rather than just scream at them, train harder. It's not useful. I guess it's kind of useful. I get it. Some people do tune on to YouTube just for um, just for motivation. Um, I don't know. I guess there's probably some uh, value to it. But I think just exclusively focusing on that without all the rest is probably a little bit misguided. And uh, we all know the, the sort of um, the cliche of harder than last time. That's kind of what I'm pushing back against a little bit. Not against, not against anyone in particular, but um, I just feel education is important and we need to really break down for people because they don't often know how to do these things. It's not a case of just work hard. Well, how exactly? How exactly do we know we're working harder? How do we know we've made it? You can't just say, ah, son, you'll know. It's like, not always that helpful. So this is my aim for some of these videos. So hopefully you guys, and also I think part of it is to reduce the ego associated with the concept of working harder. Take the ego away from it. These are objective markers so you know whether you're working hard or not. They're objective. They're nothing to do with ego. They're nothing to do with me trying to put you down. They're nothing to do with you trying to put yourself down. It's just to do with objective markers like, oh, I did it this time. So keep it up, guys. I'll speak to you.